These eerie last text messages were sent by victims that vanished shortly after hitting send. In most cases, these messages are the last time relatives communicated with their loved ones. However, there are a few rare instances when missing persons are later found. These last messages come from victims who disappeared for a short time before returning home to their families. Number 5 25-year-old Robert Galdamez was from Melbourne, Australia and suddenly vanished in 2016 while on vacation. Robert and a close friend of his visited Ben Lamond, a natural park near a hiking trail and a tall mountain in New Zealand. The pair arrived at the resort where they had reserved their room on a Monday morning. Robert and his friend had mapped out a trip around the mountain for Tuesday. According to Robert's boyfriend, Tim Heritage, the pair set out on their hike but after only 30 minutes of traveling, the friend backed out and turned around to head to the resort. Robert decided to continue on the journey alone. During his walk, he maintained contact with Tim via text message. Details of their conversation, later revealed by police, showed that Robert was feeling unsure about his hike. Apparently, he had gotten lost and confused while in the wilderness. Although the exact words of his last text were not shared publicly, Tim said he did say he was getting scared and I kept asking him, are you alright, but he didn't respond to my messages. Later on, I checked and it had been an hour. He's not a person to just not reply back. The last message Tim received from Robert was around 6pm on a Tuesday. Clearly alarmed by his boyfriend's silence and the potential for danger, Tim contacted police two hours later. He told officers that Robert suffered from epilepsy, so being alone on a trail for too long could pose a serious problem, especially without his medication on hand. A search was immediately issued for the missing man, which included a massive team of search dogs and rescuers. For two days, Robert was nowhere to be found. Police spread the news and missing persons flyers to alert the community and other visitors in the event that they had any information. By this point, it's very likely that Tim was starting to lose hope and feared his boyfriend may have been injured or was lost in the woods with nowhere to sleep. In a miraculous turn of events, Robert was found by a small search team in a more desolate part of the woods. After two nights of freezing cold temperatures, which Robert had to endure with no supplies and only a very small fire for warmth, he was rescued and taken to the hospital with a case of suspected hypothermia. Robert's family and his boyfriend were thrilled to hear the news that their loved one had been found alive. According to this report, Robert got lost after reaching the top of his hike. He tried to follow his path back to the resort but somehow went in a complete opposite direction and was lost with no way of getting help. Thankfully for Robert, the chilling text messages he sent his boyfriend turned out to not be his last. Number 4 This case includes a twist ending that you may not expect, making it differ greatly from some of the others on this list. In August of 2015, 41-year-old Connie Ditto from Virginia suddenly vanished. One night, Connie texted her husband, Mark Ditto, while he was at work. She explained to him that she was suffering from severe head pains and migraines. The following day, Connie went to work in the morning as usual. She and her husband texted frequently throughout the day, as they did on most days. However, things took a turn when Connie told her husband that her pains had returned and she felt as though she needed to close her shop and head to a doctor. Connie went to an urgent care clinic in the area, called Patient First. Her husband offered to meet her at the clinic to sit with her but Connie insisted that he stay home. A short while later, she texted him saying she was being sent to the hospital for x-rays. Again, Mark offered to tag along and even drive her to the hospital. However, this was the last text that he would receive from his wife before she mysteriously vanished. Her phone was turned off just after sending her final message, which caused Mark to worry. That night, Mark and his stepdaughters, Connie's teens, drove to patient first but she wasn't there. They then checked several hospitals in the area with the same luck. Mark claimed that he even drove late into the night just to check areas in town where his wife may have been hiding or broken down on the side of the road. The following morning, it became clear that something was very wrong. Mark began to speculate what could have happened to his wife. He was worried that she'd gotten into an accident or possibly been abducted on her way to the hospital. He called police to report her missing and explained that she suffered from alcoholism and depression. Additionally, she apparently fell the week before and injured her head. Mark wondered if perhaps some sort of internal injury caused her disappearance. A search team was immediately organized and the first shocking clue that was uncovered came from patient first, the clinic Connie had supposedly visited. Police found that while Connie did show up and sign in, she left before the doctor even called her name, meaning that she'd lied about being sent to a hospital. Just two days after she disappeared, Connie was found. 
Police didn't release the details of how she was located, but she was staying in a hotel room in Innsbruck, Virginia, about a 30-minute drive from her home. When confronted by police, Connie informed them that she was staying at the hotel to avoid her husband after he assaulted her the week prior. Only moments after being found, Connie took out a protective order against her husband. Mark was arrested for assault and from jail, released a statement claiming he was innocent and that the alleged assault his wife was referring to was an attempt by Mark and his stepdaughters to take her car keys while she was intoxicated. This case is especially interesting because it's already very rare for a missing person to be found, but adding the fact that Connie vanished willingly makes the story even more interesting and peculiar. Connie's final text before vanishing may not have been sad or disturbing, but it was an important key in her eventually being found. There's no word on the charges in this case yet, but let's hope that everything works out for both Connie and her husband. Number 3 as you may be beginning to realize, cases in which victims are found safe don't always involve a loving family reunion. As it turns out, many victims eventually found disappeared willingly for one reason or another. While police are probably happy to find these people alive and well, their actions might be seen as selfish, wasteful, and even criminal. Regardless of the final outcome, it's understandable that a last text message received by a family member before someone disappears can be scary and upsetting nonetheless. Once you've expected the worst, even something criminal can be a relief. That's generally what occurred in the case of Alicia Newsom. On November 13th, 2019, 22-year-old Alicia Newsom from Harrelson County, Georgia, went to a doctor's appointment early in the day. She texted her mother about the plans after the appointment, explaining that she was going to visit a friend and take them to the grocery store. As simple and boring as the text may seem, it turned out to be a final message Alicia's mother received before her daughter suddenly went missing. After that text, Alicia's phone was turned off and her mother, despite countless desperate attempts, could not get a hold of her. Alicia did not return home that night and the following day, after she'd been missing for 24 hours, her mother contacted police. An investigation was set in motion. The first step investigators took was reporting to the home of Don Cox, the friend Alicia claimed she was going to take to Walmart. At first, police couldn't get a hold of Don and were unable to visit his home due to a locked gate and lack of a warrant. Witnesses did say that Don and Alicia had been seen together, and later, officers were able to contact Don while he was home and questioned him briefly. He explained that he'd not seen Alicia since Wednesday night when she took him to Walmart. Apparently, her phone had been left at his house, which he willingly handed over to police. That same night, though, an officer was patrolling the small town and stumbled across Alicia's car, parked in front of a house. The homeowners claimed that Don and Alicia had left the car there. Police obtained a search warrant to enter Don's home, and inside, they found Alicia hiding out in a back room. She claimed she needed help, so she was sent to a hospital for evaluation. Don was arrested and charged with obstruction of justice, and Alicia was later released from the hospital and was also facing charges in the coming months. Not only was Alicia charged for her intentional disappearance, but she was overall looked down upon for wasting the valuable time of officers and search members, as well as the fact that she caused her mother so much stress and worry. Alicia's mother described her feelings upon hearing the news and said that she was relieved that the last message she got from her daughter wasn't the final message ever, now that she was found alive and well. Number 2 18-year-old Jameis Brown was reported missing from Long Beach, California in the early morning hours of December 1st, 2019. Around 10 p.m. on Saturday, November 30th, Jameis left her home. Her mother watched as she walked out of the house and got into a dark-colored sedan which quickly took off. Just a short time later, her mother texted her to check in. Jameis responded and informed her mother that she was with a man, although she didn't share his name or even how they knew each other. The brief message with little to no information was the last text her mother got before worry filled her mind as her daughter mysteriously vanished. The hours stretched into night and not only had Miss Brown not received contact from her daughter whatsoever, but Jameis's phone seemed to have been turned off. None of her texts were being read and her calls were sent straight to voicemail. Miss Brown stayed up late that night, nervously waiting for her daughter's safe return as the clock ticked away. The following morning, she decided enough was enough and contacted local police. In a statement given to investigators, Miss Brown explained that her daughter frequently left the house with strangers and was gone very late into the night, but that she usually stayed in contact with her. Additionally, while she stayed out very late, she was always home before around 2 a.m. Miss Brown also shared a more concerning piece of information about Jameis' health, as apparently the young woman suffered from a severe medical condition which required a strict scheduled dose of a life-sustaining medication. Furthermore, Miss Brown described her daughter's mental capacity as diminished. 
all of which made the case much more urgent and stressful to officers. While Miss Brown is filled with fear and couldn't help but revisit her daughter's last text, wondering if it may be the final text ever, the search quickly produced positive results. Police fortunately found Jameis at a friend's house in Signal Hill, California, only a 10-minute drive from her home. She was safe and in good health. Police have yet to release specific details about the case, but either way, her mother was relieved to hear her daughter was home again. Number 1 The last text message someone might send before going missing can include almost anything. While a lot of them are mundane, considering most people go missing while having a normal day, others can be truly terrifying. It's hard to imagine what the worst final text someone receives would be, but this one definitely deserves a spot in the top five. On November 17, 2019, 48-year-old Dana Lynch Welsh sent a text message to a friend in which she claimed she was being drugged, harmed, and held hostage. A text like this from anyone is already troubling enough. However, this one was especially horrible because it would turn out to be the last message Dana was sent before disappearing. The friend who received the text replied back and tried to call Dana but was unsuccessful. Unfortunately, they didn't know where she lived or who she was with either. Finally, after several days, Dana's friend called local police and requested a welfare check on November 21st. Without an address, investigators had to track the last text message using an IP address. The results showed that the message was sent somewhere in Phoenix. Officers got a phone number and made a call to the homeowner attached to the address. The unknown man informed police that Dana had been living with him for several months, but he recently kicked her out because of her severe drinking problem. From there, he had no idea where she went. Again, police didn't release detailed information on how they stumbled upon Dana, but she was found safe in a home in Hereford, Arizona. Apparently, Dana was never in any danger at all and sent the terrible text while intoxicated for reasons unknown. Clearly, it's upsetting to learn that someone would lie about something so serious and cause a frenzy amongst their loved ones and law enforcement. If that message would truly have been her last, it would have been notoriously devastating. It's wonderful that Dana wasn't harmed, but her actions were definitely questionable. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this narration, maybe consider checking out my personal channel at youtube.com slash tie underscore knots. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and click that notification bell to keep updated with all of our future uploads.